Hello everyone, glad to metaphorically see you again, and welcome to the second part of my over-analysis of the homunculi from FMA Brotherhood, this time starring Gluttony. If you'd like to hear a little bit about the first homunculus permadeath, Lost, you can find my first video in the description down below. Anyway, on to Gluttony. He is a chubby, gorilla-armed baby of about adult height with an Ouroboros tattoo on his very long tongue. Like Sloth, he passed over the really cool purple cat eyes in exchange for sketchy circles. In keeping with his name and job description, he is always hungry, and his food of choice is humans. Uncooked, unseasoned, and freshly bloodied. Delicious. Other than for normal homunculus healing and physical strength, Gluttony's only superhuman abilities are a tracker sense of smell and a discount portal of truth in his stomach. This relative lack of combat ability, unless really, really mad, partially contributes to him being the most childlike of the homunculi. Like a little kid, he thinks of himself first and is completely controlled by his wants. In his particular instance, this is parental love and eating people. So he's basically a normal kid. Also, like a child, he cares a lot for pleasing the people he thinks of as his parents, father and lust. He cares about this so much that he has very little autonomy, always obeying mother homunculi when they tell him what to do. Unless it involves not eating Mustang. Though he never show or though he rarely shows any inclination to eat the other homunculi, you agreed, Gluttony never questions if it is moral to eat regular people. Frankly, I don't think he's capable of moral quandaries. Despite this, he doesn't hate humans the way some of the other homunculi do. Except for Mustang. Gluttony even turns to Alphonse, a 14-year-old human boy, for advice after he accidentally ate at an envy. He honestly didn't seem to know what to do on his own and will even turn to a human for help. Gluttony even seems confused about why humans hurt him when they have obvious reasons to, like, you are trying to eat me and everyone I love. Because of his infantile view of the world, Gluttony can't understand why humans don't believe and think the same things he does. But he also doesn't hate them for it. Well, except he really does hate Mustang. This infantilism is a mark of what Gluttony the Vice does to you. Gluttony makes you a, a consumer, a passive receiver. Even the not portal of truth in his stomach points to this. The real portal of truth operates according to the principle of equivalent exchange. Knowledge in exchange for the loss of what you hold most dear. Gluttony, however, can't give anything back. He just takes in and destroys. The only partial departure from this is from his one major relationship in the show. Lust. He seems to think of her like a mother and is really torn apart by her death. This is the only time Gluttony acts against father's wishes. The only time Gluttony seems to care about anyone more than himself. And this is also why he really hates Mustang. Gluttony can't think clearly, though, and doesn't have any self-control, which leads to him ultimately letting Mustang get away any time he has an opportunity to actually get Mustang, and later on accidentally eating Ed, the sacrifice candidate, and his brother, Envy. May I also take this point to mention that Gluttony... You'd think he would have been able to smell that the coat was the only thing that, you know, Mustang left behind, that he actually walked away from this, but whatever. I guess he was having a really bad day. Anyway, several months later, Gluttony and Pride are in the forest trying to fight various members of the good guy team. After a long and grueling fight with Greeling and Lon Fawn, Gluttony sees a light in the distance and runs over there to find that Pride is fighting Ed and one of the Chimera. Now, both Gluttony and Pride are pretty low on souls, health, whatever you want to call it. They're pretty close to dying. And so, Glut and so Pride, traditionally the worst of the Seven Deadly Sins, eats Gluttony to strengthen himself. He's a great brother, that one. Great, great. Naive and helpless, Gluttony begs for mercy from Pride. From Pride! And then finally cries out for help from the only person to ever show him 
any sense of affection. Lost! It's been dead for 19 episodes! This is very effective because his innocent cruelty makes him a good villain, but we, the audience, don't actually want to see him die. Certainly not in such a cruel way. Also, remember when I said the Purgatorio would be a running theme in this series? Well, according to Dante, not that one. Lust and Gluttony are actually the least of the Seven Deadly Sins due to their largely carnal nature and are grouped together. Furthermore, Gluttony is constantly being told throughout the story that he's not allowed to eat this person or that person, which could be a reference to the punishment for the gluttonous in Dante's Purgatory, seeing tempting food that is always out of reach. Or it could just be that having somebody say, Can I eat them? is almost as creepy as the response being, Not yet. Do any of you have any stunning insights into gluttony that you'd like to share, or an elaboration to make, or any point to bring up, really? Anything would be appreciated. I know I'm a new YouTuber and my equipment isn't that good, but advice would be very useful. Anyway, next up is Envy, who's actually pretty cool when you get into it. You know the drill about liking and subscribing, so just have a good day everyone and keep an eye out for me.